Hi, I'm Mike. And I'm Erin. And this is a potato, quite possibly the most underrated veggie out there. Today we take a look at this total tubular tuber. And get a chance to try out our brand new implement for the BCS two-wheel tractor. It's all coming up on our Wyoming Life. <laughs> The lowly potato, a source of tons of essential vitamins and, and nutrition, nutrients and elements like manganese along with antioxidants. Potatoes are the, uh, the perfect food for you. You could eat them for the rest of your life and never have any deficiencies. I mean, I don't really know that you could eat them the rest of your life. Well, you but... could, if you could, you didn't need ketchup, probably. <laughs> um, there was a man in Australia named Andrew Taylor, and he ate nothing but potatoes for an entire year. Um, surprisingly, his blood sugar actually improved, he slept better, and somehow he managed to lose 116 pounds. That's really crazy considering all the low-carb diets out there that don't allow you. <laughs> I think he actually sells a potato diet now. <laughs> um, you can learn more on the website uh, spudfit.com. <laughs> the best part is if you want a potato, uh, and if you want the best a potato can offer, you can slice them, you can dice them, you can fry them, you can bake them, you can boil them, you can broil them. It's really hard to screw up a potato. And you've been growing potatoes out here on the ranch for the past few years. They're pretty easy to grow, aren't they? Yeah, I mean, I've grown them for several years, and, and yeah, they're pretty, uh, they're pretty easy to grow. Um, you grow them from seed potatoes, you plant them really early in the spring, um, and your seed potatoes are actually bred to be disease-free and to give the, the healthiest plants that you can. Um, in fact, there's only 15 states in the country where seed potatoes are actually produced, and they're picked for their cold winters that helps kill all the pests and diseases um, that potatoes are really known about for. Um, the potatoes actually grow underneath the soil and they have these really tall, bushy branches that grow above the ground and they get flowers. And after the flowers bloom, in a few weeks you have baby new potatoes. So. I actually read somewhere that the, uh, the flowers are poisonous. The, oh. the same way that, because uh, they're in the same nightshade family as tomatoes. Yeah, yeah. The, don't eat the flowers on the potatoes. I don't think and anybody... And did you know that the average American does eat, though, 126 pounds of potatoes per year? Lincoln can knock that out every week by Tuesday. <laughs> <I know. laughs> and did you also know that a, what a potato's uh, favorite horror movie is? What? Silence of the Yams. That's not true. <laughs> Stick around to the end of the video for a whole new, a whole bunch more potato facts and maybe a few more uh, spudtacular puns. But we do have some work today to do today. We're going to get out. Uh, we're going to go start harvesting potatoes uh, in the big garden with the help of BCS tractors and Spedo. I think that's how you pronounce Is that. Is it Spedo or Speedo? It's not Speedo. There's two E's in Speedo. <laughs> Uh, but every time I, t I try to search for Spedo, I get Speedo. So sure. uh, it's an Italian company that produces a potato harvester that attaches to the BCS and hopefully makes this whole process a little bit easier. You've been trying to get a potato digger from BCS for quite a while. Yeah, I mean, sure. I, I just want a potato digger of some form um, and BCS uh, was great, wonderful enough that they had a used one um, that they were that was headed across the U.S. They, we asked if we could borrow it and they um, we wanted to do some testing with it in our soil and they diverted shipping towards us and uh, we get to try it out. So thank you BCS, but first we gotta, yeah. we gotta get it hooked up. The BCS is a two-wheel tractor that we have had here on the ranch for the last couple of years. I use it for tilling, mowing, creating raised beds, and more. It has really been a great addition to the ranch, and I don't know what I did before I had it. The Spedo potato digger is still on the pallet it came on from shipping, and once we have it loose, then it's time to put it on the tractor. Attaching a new implement to the BCS is always a learning experience. Each one has a bit of a trick to it, but once you figure it out, you have it made. This thing appears to be a little bit finicky, uh, but once we get everything lined up, we can start attaching the PTO. One thing that does bug me with uh, some equipment is the threaded adjustment screws. I get the reason behind them, but uh, you know they're used to change the angle and the depth of the blade. But what I don't understand is why manufacturers insist on painting them. A little masking tape could go a long way and maybe even save them some paint cost, which we just grind off anyway. But with the adjustments made, it's time to head out and give this thing a go. Yeah, what does it do when you turn it on? We're gonna find out. First though, we'll give it a low RPM test run just to see what the shaking portion of the GTO will do. Here's how this thing works. 
it digs down into the soil, hopefully under the potatoes down in the ground, lifting the potatoes up, sifting the soil away, and leaving the spuds on top of the ground ready to be picked up. If it doesn't stir me up like a paint can shaker before we're done. Normally we dig potatoes by hand. That's how I've done it for years. So getting underneath all of the potatoes with a shovel and popping them up to the surface and picking them up as I go. We have about 180 feet of potatoes to dig. So we should have about 180 plants. Each plant can produce between five and 10 potatoes. On the low side, that's almost 1,000 potatoes if the average potato is about five ounces. Then that should be around 300 pounds of potatoes. That's not something that I, that I want to dig by hand, so I really hope that this potato digger works. Here we go. To start with, I have it set at a depth that I hope will dig underneath all the potatoes in the ground. But the BCS just doesn't have the snort to pull the digger through the dirt. A little adjustment and here we can go again, this time cutting through the ground exactly how it's supposed to. And potatoes are coming up on the rack and then laying on top of the soil. But it is a bit hard to control and I can only compare it to trying to hold on to a slippery butt naked baby that just wants to run through the house in all his glory. But eventually I do get through a row and we can take a look back. The original thought was that I would run the potato digger in the video, but that's just not going to happen. <laughs> but I can look at the aftermath. With having to set the depth higher and, than I would have liked to, we have cut a lot of potatoes in half. But other than that, the potato digger does what its name implies. It digs potatoes, it also slices potatoes, and it gives your husband brain damage, but that just might have been a pre-existing condition. <laughs> The way we currently plant potatoes, the potato digger doesn't work great for us. If we'd hilled them, which I've done in previous years but didn't get to this year, then we would be able to drive over the hills with the digger and that might work better. It would allow the digger to only dig into the hill and not into the rest of the soil. With a price tag of almost $2,700, for us it's not economical either, especially when I only sell potatoes for $2 a pound. However, if you plant a lot of potatoes and you harvest a lot of potatoes and you hill your potatoes in the long run, the time that it saves you will definitely make up for the cost. It only took a few minutes to dig almost 180 feet of potatoes, a project that would have taken me pretty much all day with a shovel. And after picking up what we have dug so far, it might be worth another pass to try and dig up some more of the potatoes. But that can wait a while, at least until my eyeballs. You're done for the day? Bouncing. Yeah, I almost went blah, 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 blah. overall uh, running it. Uh, you know, it might actually take a bigger machine than we have. I guess that would let you, you know, dig in a little bit deeper and pull it through. And it might actually take out some of the vibration. A little more horsepower might help the situation. Maybe. But as fun as it was, uh, it uh, might have been just a little bit too much of the, brrr, you know, so. <laughs> Um, I mean, it did do what it said it would do. It, it dug potatoes, and now I can take the potatoes over to the farm store to sell them to our customers. It's true uh, that the potato is the perfect vegetable, and I will give you all the proof you need. No kid anywhere will ever want to play with a Mr. Broccoli Head. Mr. Potato Head rules the roost, and for good reason. <laughs> Be sure to subscribe. We have lots more on the way. It's fall. That means we'll be freight checking soon, working cows and calves, and bringing you more from Aaron's winter growing in the high tunnels. What do you have going on in there right now? A lot of grass. <laughs> no, but I've got winter crops like uh, spinach and lettuces, turnips, kohlrabi, beets, carrots. It's full. It's also full of grass. <laughs> awesome. I do believe, though, that I promised you some more potato facts and a few more potato puns. Good luck with that. Here we go. So I knew a girl once who owned three French fry factories. 
I was impressed. But to her, it was just small potatoes. Okay, how about this one? What do you call a potato at a football game? A spectator. And another? All right. What do you get when it rains potatoes? Spuddles. <laughs> what do you call a lot of people, uh, somebody who spends a lot of time staring at potatoes? Well, that's a meditator. <laughs> Come on, guys. This thing working? Hey, 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 don't turn me off. These, th these jokes are very appealing. Get it? Appealing. Ooh.